Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a component creator, which is the type of component that can create other components during a simulation. So right now in the 3D world, I have a simulation running. And notice I have a basic feeder selected. And this has a component creator behavior in it. So it's creating a type of component during the simulation. That part flows along the path of the feeder. And then it flows onto a conveyor and then flows along the path of the conveyor to the other end. Now the type of component that a component creator can create is defined by a part property and you can rename that so notice in the basic feeder its template component is defined by this creator part property and it's basically a URI type property so you can reference a component on your computer remotely or you can reference the VCID of a component which it's using here so you have this prefix of VCID colon followed by the VCID of a component. Now, since every component has a unique VCID, you, know, you can call and execute multiple commands that can create different types of parts during a simulation. Now, it's a little bit of advanced for what we're going to cover in this video, so I'm just going to show you the basics of creating a component container and making your own feeder. So, are you ready? All right, let's get started. So, what we first want to do is reset the simulation and get the preferred modeling environment, which is an empty layout. So, I'll just press the Control plus N key, and I'm not going to save anything. So, now I have an empty layout. What I want to do now is add a new component to the 3D world. So I'll click the modeling tab, go to the component group, and then click the new command here to create a new component. And let's rename this component. So I'll go here to the component properties panel and set the name property to be feeder. And now let's add some geometry to this component. So I'll go to the geometry group, click the features arrow here, and then click box to create a block feature in the component. Let's now edit the dimensions of a block. So I'll go to the feature properties panel and let's use a length of 500, a width of 400, and a height of 700. So there's our block. Let's now add the component creator behavior to this component. So I'll go to the behavior group, click the behaviors arrow, and under material flow, I'll now click component creator to add that behavior. And now I need to define the part or the template that the component creator will use to make components during a simulation. So you can notice over here in the properties panel, when we have that part property, so I can either pick a component that's on my system using this ellipsis or just type in the URI here, or I can use the VCID of a component that's in my eCatalog panel, which I'm going to show you how to do now. So I'll go back to the Home tab, and in my eCatalog panel I'll expand the Collections view. I'll expand Models by Type, and let's use our Products and Containers. So I'll click this Smart Collection here. and Let's make the eCatalog panel just a bit bigger so we can see everything. Let's actually go ahead and create a car tire. So I'll scroll down to find a car tire. Yep, there it is. And now to use this component's VCID, I'm going to right click the item. And notice I have an option here called View Metadata. Now, if this component is installed or downloaded locally to your computer, you might have a command here called Edit Metadata. You can click that as well. But in this case, I'm using this from a remote library, so I can just view, view the metadata. And here's that VCID property, so I'll go ahead and copy this field like so, and close that out. And notice over here in the component properties panel, you do have some properties for that component creator behavior I just added. So we have the interval property that defines how often you create a component. We have a limit that defines how many components you can create with a creator. And we have that part property. So to use the VCID of the car tire, I'll type VCID, this is lowercase by the way, colon, and then I'll just paste in that VCID and press the enter key. So I didn't get any errors, so it looks good. Now what happens if I run the simulation? Well, I'll show you. Now we don't see anything, but trust me, the component creator is making the components, but a component that's created dynamically, you know, it has to be attached or contained to something in the 3D world, otherwise, you know, it will disappear to save memory. So to fix that, what I'll do is I'll reset the simulation, I'll go back to the modeling tab, and that same component I'm working with, that same node, I'll add a component container behavior, which is a type of static container. So I'll go back to the behavior group, click the behaviors arrow, and under material flow, I'm going to click this command here called container to add a component container behavior. And now I want to pair this container with the feeder. So what happens is that the component creator will generate a component and it will you know, send it out into the world, but there's nothing in the component right now to actually contain that created component. So if I actually expand the component creator behavior and the component container behavior, notice they have ports for you know its inputs and outputs. So a component that's created is sent out of the output port. So I'll select it here in the component graph panel. And now to make sure that output of the component creator is transferred into the component container, 
what I'll do is I'll set the connection property here to component container but I'm not going to transfer the created component fully into the container because a component container is just a static container so if I want to move or kind of manipulate the created component a bit I want to make sure I'm not transferring it completely into the container so what I'm doing here is I'm just pairing this component container with the component creator so they work together so if I run the simulation notice I can now see the car tire here at the components origin now if I want to change the location of where that component container is that's paired with the creator I can just use a frame feature. So I'll reset the simulation. I'll go to the geometry group and click the feature zero and then click frame. And I can't see the label of the frame feature in the 3D world so I'll go here to my frame types, turn those on and make sure you have this frames checkbox selected. I'll now use the move tool to move that frame up to the top face center here like so. And now I want to reference this frame feature as location of my component container. So in the component graph panel, I'll select the component container behavior. I'll go to the properties panel and notice it has a location property for referencing a frame feature in the component. So I'll use that frame there. And if I run the simulation, yep, now our car tire is there at the top of our block. Now let's say after you create a component, you want to move it along a path. Well, I'll show you how to do that now. So right now we're creating a component and just putting it into a static container. So I'm going to reset the simulation. And let's now add a one-way path to this uh, component. So I'll go to the behavior group, click the behaviors arrow, and under material flow, I'll click one-way path to add that behavior. And now we need frame features to define the path itself. So we have one frame feature here. Let's actually make the path go all the way to this edge point here. So I'll go to the geometry group, click features, and I'll add another frame feature. And I'll use the move tool to move that frame to that midpoint of that edge there. And now we need to reference these frame features in our path. So in the component graph panel, I'll click one way path. Then in the properties panel, I'll click the path expand button followed by the plus button. And then I'll add the frames in order. So I'll click frame, then frame one to add them to the path. And this is the order. So we're going to start at the frame and end at frame one. So the component should transfer here and move to this location. Now we need to make sure that the created component is transferred into the one way path. Now a component container is a static container so it can't transfer really anything out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the one way path here in the component graph panel and notice it has ports too for transferring in components and transferring out components. So I want something to be transferred into the path so I'll click the input port here and then the properties panel I'll set this connection property to be component creator and what do we want from the component creator? Well we want whatever is transferred out of the component creator. So I'll set the port to be output. And notice what I just did here. I actually stole the connection from the component container and the component creator. So if I go back to the component creator and the component graph panel, click the output port, notice it's no longer connected to the component container, it's connected to the path, and it's transferring components into that one-way path. So to see how that works, let's run our simulation. And yep, the tires are created, they're contained on the one-way path, and they move along from one point to the end of the path, like so. We now want to transfer the tar tires into another component, for example, conveyor. So what we can do is we can add an interface. So I'll reset the simulation. And for interface, we want the conveyor to kind of plug into this connection point over here at this frame. So in the behavior group, I'll click the behavior zero. And then in interfaces, I'll click one to one to add a one to one connection. In the properties panel, I'll click add new section to add a new connection point, which is going to be located where. So I'll set section frame to be frame one the end of my one-way path. And what type of field do we need? Well, we need a flow field to transfer components in and out of something. In this case, a container. So the container we're using is a one-way path. And we want to transfer components not from the start of the path, but the end of it. So I'm going to use the output port of the path. So whatever plugs into this one-way path in my feeder, it will then receive in a component. Let's now test this. So I'll go back to the Home tab. And in my eCatalog panel, let's expand conveyors under models by type, click visual components, and let's use this conveyor item here. So I'll drag that into the 3D world. And notice the PMP or plug and play command is active. So if I move this conveyor closer to my feeder, notice that, yep, I do get that green arrow. So my interface is set up and compatible. I move it closer and they connect. The green arrow means the connection is active. So if I run the simulation, the car tire is created. It flows along the path and it flows into this conveyor. Great. Let's now go ahead and reset the simulation 
and we don't want to get rid of our work, so let's save the components. So I will select the feeder here in the 3D world. I'll go back to the modeling tab, and then the component group, I'll click this save button here. And in the save component task pane, I have the name of the component. So feeder, for its type, I can go ahead and choose feeders. For tags, let's just use tutorial to make sure it's just an example. And then I'll click save. And now let's make sure that the component is in our e-catalog panel. So I'll go back to the home tab. And I save the component in my My Models collection. So let's actually scroll down and see if we can find it. And yep, there's our feeder. Now let's say you change your mind. You want to create a different type of component during a simulation. Well, what we can do is we have our feeder selected here in the 3D world. And in the component properties panel, notice we have that part property. We just have to change what component we're referencing as the template for making new components. So let's actually go back to our e-catalog panel, click Products and Containers, and what do we want to create this time? Uh, let's see, what can we do? Let's create a cube. So I'll get the VCID of the cube, so I'll right-click the item, view the metadata, copy that field, close that out, and for the VCID property, I'll press the Control plus the A key and delete to clear that text box. I'll type in VCID and lowercase, followed by a colon, paste in the VCID, press enter, didn't get any errors, so when I run the simulation, show me that cube. Yep, there's the cubes. Great. Alright, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com and stay tuned for part two and three of this video in which I'm going to show you how to use a Python script to control the logic of a component creator, manipulate containers, and form stacks and patterns of components. For example, I'm going to show you how to turn this feeder into an advanced feeder. Oh boy! So it'll be able to create multiple parts and read in a work order that can change the template that's used to make components. So you can make you know, this cube larger or smaller if you want to, a different material, or you can have multiple components that are attached together to form some type of a component assembly. So as always, have a wonderful day.